Welcome to the Shearwalls online tutorial. This first video will show you the layout of the basic functions of the program as well as how to quickly design a simple structure. Many engineers have purchased Shearwalls, however, they haven't taken the time to learn the program because they think it is a difficult task. Upon opening Shearwalls for the first time, a window containing information regarding how to get started with Shearwalls will be displayed. The displayed steps guide the user to start from a new file to the design as well as viewing the results and log file. The Getting Started with Shearwalls window can be accessed at any time by selecting the Getting Started with Shearwalls icon. The toolbars, data bars, and menus necessary to the successful design of a structure in Shearwalls are located at the top of the main window. The first group of buttons are dedicated to file operations such as starting a new file, opening a file, saving a file, and printing. The second group of buttons is dedicated to actions such as importing a CAD file, building blocks, walls, openings, extending walls upwards, roof, load generation site information, generate loads, and loads and forces. The last group of buttons relate to views such as the plan view, form view, elevation view, result view, log file, and the acceptance of the design. The status bar contain hints and instructions to the user and descriptions of the program buttons, menu items, and data field. With the newly added Accept Design button, Shearwall now allows you to transfer the design results from a successful design back to the input fields, replacing unknown values on those fields. This allows you to experiment with and tweak your design more easily. The data bars are located at the top of each window or view. They allow the users to change building levels to turn data on and off in the corresponding view and provide for quicker selection of options and settings than by the settings dialog or the main menu. These icons will be further discussed in the following tutorials. The main menu bar of the program contains all of the commands represented by the toolbar buttons in addition to the view, window, and help menus to further guide the user. For illustration purposes, a simple structure will be created using the Blocks button. A block is created by simply dragging the mouse anywhere on the screen to form a rectangle or a square. The dimensions of the block and its coordinates on the Cartesian plan can be adjusted following the creation of the block. It is possible to have one block or several blocks and up to six stories. However, for this simple structure, we will stay with one block and a single story. Blocks can be deleted by selecting the unwanted block and pressing the delete button. Once satisfied with the layout of the block, the walls can easily be modeled using the Walls button. It is important to note that once the Walls button has been selected, that changes to the plan geometry of the block cannot be done anymore. If the Shear Walls Form View is not present, it can be displayed by selecting the Form View button. By default, the type of wall used by the program is exterior segmented, which is one of the standard walls of the program. If another standard type of wall is desired, it can easily be changed by selecting the drop down menu. However, if the wall or walls of interest are not selected prior to selecting another wall type, the new wall type will only apply to the subsequent walls. We will now delete the wall we just created by selecting it and either right clicking and selecting delete or by selecting it and pressing the delete key. When selecting exterior wall B1, 
It is possible to see that the Design in Group option is selected. It allows the user to quickly change the properties of the shear wall material of all walls at once when only one wall is selected, as shown by the pop-up window. If this is not the case, and that it is desired to have one wall with different properties than the others, the Design in Group option needs to be unchecked. Then the properties can be changed and the other walls won't be affected. Note that the other walls still have the 716 structural sheeting. For this example, all walls will be identical. To select all walls, you can either select them individually by holding the control key or simply by pressing the control A keys. The walls will have a 716 inch thick sheathing with typical nailing patterns on the exterior side only. As it can be seen, it is possible to specify an interior sheathing, but for this example, no sheathing will be applied on the interior side, as it generally helps in seismic zone not to account for the gypsum in order to keep a higher R value. Limiting the unknowns will speed up the computation time, and if the selected characteristics of the walls are not appropriate, they can always be changed in a following iteration. Now that we are satisfied with the wall properties, we can insert openings by selecting the Openings button. An opening can be added in one of two ways. By selecting a shear line and drawing an opening, or by selecting a shear line and using the form view. Using the first method, which might not be as accurate as desired, the location and size of opening can be modified using the form view. If a window is desired next to the door we just created, it can be added using the form view by selecting the new opening from the drop down menu and specifying the offset from the edge of the shear line, width, height, and offset from bottom, and then selecting add. The openings can be seen in the Elevation view by selecting the Shear Line of Interest and selecting the Elevation view button. The roof is added through the Roof button where it can be modeled as a flat roof, gable, or hip. The roof slope and overhang can also be changed. The Load Generation Site Information tab ensures that the appropriate values are used for the generation of the wind and seismic load. These details will be covered in a different tutorial. Next, the loads can be generated using the Generate Loads option, where loads can be generated for both wind and seismic, wind only, or seismic only. The loads are generated by selecting the Generate Loads on Selected Levels, The loads shown are for wind and can be changed using the show data bar. If additional loads are required, it can be done through the load and forces button. Now we run the design, which generates a number of tables, including the shear wall schedule, which in this case we have specified. You can also select the shear wall that you think might be susceptible to failure to verify if it passes by going to the elevation view. Since this wall does not have big words that say failed across it, this wall is strong enough to withstand the applied loads. You can verify that by checking the tables and going to either wind or seismic design flexible or rigid diaphragm design, and going to shear results. In this system, 
the loads are very small and it passes since the critical response is less than one. And that is how you design a simple structure.